Imagine this, you just upgraded to this premium FPV goggle. It was expensive, but it was worth it. Surely you don't need to spend any more money. Well, today I'm going to talk about upgrades that you can do to the DJI FPV goggles. Is it worth it? Are they expensive? Which ones have I done and why? I've got three that I did and two that I haven't done yet. So we'll talk about those two at the end, but let's just get into the others right now. And the first one is really simple and straightforward. It's the foam. This is the stock foam that comes with the DJI goggles and it's lovely. It's thin, it's smooth, it kind of feels wipeable. And uh, so what's wrong with it? Well, the problem with it is if you wear these goggles for a while, you get two big red rings around your eyes because they're kind of uncomfortable. And this foam seems to be the culprit. In fact, you get a lot of light leakage as well through the edge. And that's not the case for everybody because of course we've all got different shaped faces. But for most people who I spoke to, that does seem to be a problem, myself included. And so I upgraded the foam and I've got this nice squidgy soft foam. That's from DJI, from the website. You order it direct. It costs 14 quid plus six quid post and packaging. So it was about 20 pounds. It's not perfect because it's not wipeable. I feel like in the summer that's gonna get dirty and you might need to try and wash it or something or replace it again. But it is nice and soft, it's comfortable. It's kind of seals around your face, which feels a little weird at first, but it does stop the light leakage. So for me, that was totally worth it. And the next thing we're gonna discuss is the strap. This is the stock strap that comes with the DJI goggles and it has three parts to it. This middle part goes over the, over the top of your head like this. And what it effectively does is helps get the goggles in the correct position on your face. So I can see why they design it that way actually. Um, and I do like that about it, how it kind of really locks the goggles in that nice position. The downside is you can't put the goggles all the way down around your neck. And they are quite big heavy goggles. So some people do like to do that, put them around the neck. Um, and the other thing is that it's going to put a line across the middle of your head. So if you've got any kind of hairstyle, you're going to end up looking like the Joker or something. I upgraded to one of these. This is a fat strap from a company called Fat Straps. And it's nice, big, thick strap, really convenient and simple, just slips right on. And it comes with a little adapter piece for your goggle battery if you want to wear that goggle battery on your head. More about that later on. But if you're interested in upgrading to one of these straps, again, the company is Fat Straps, costs about 40 pounds. And for me, it's worth it, but it's not perfect. Sometimes it does slip down the back of my head and I kind of have to tuck my ears under here as well. So you don't really desperately need to go out and upgrade that strap, but you might decide that you want to. It's the same really with the foam as well. It's fine, you'll be able to fly. That light leakage doesn't ruin the experience. And uh, so you don't have to do these upgrades. But one of the kind of big talked about upgrades that everybody wants to know is the antenna. Should you put something like this on it? Should you run the stock antenna? Maybe you should try the Axie antenna. Maybe the stubby True RC antennas. D do you get better performance? Is it worth doing? Are they expensive? I wanted to know the answers. So I went out into the field and we did some testing with these antenna. I'm gonna to cut to that footage now come back at the end and we'll discuss more about these antennas and also two other upgrades and are they worth it. We're going to give these antennas a test. I've also got the stock antennas for a comparison. I'm here with Pilgrim FPV and real-time FPV, Ryan. And why did you upgrade your antennas, Ryan? <laughs> so they didn't take them as much space up in my bag. Yeah. Clap them on things. Yeah, yeah. But it's a good reason because those nice small Axie antenna um, will fit in your bag way better, but it's pretty good because it's going to allow us to test the Axie antennas, test the stock ones and test these. So all we're going to do is put the drone in this exact spot here on those bricks so that that's consistent. And then we're going to walk to an exact spot over there behind a couple of walls and try putting our heads in different positions and record how many megabytes per second we're getting on the goggles to see which one performs best. Right, I've plugged in the drone and I'm just walking around here. If I stand right here with this blue piece of graffiti behind me, so what I've done is set these goggles to just 25 milliwatts. Um, so they're on the lowest power setting. So I'm trying to kind of force the error to see where it breaks. Um, and right now it looks very pixelated. I'm going to just press record. Very pixelated indeed. 
I can see Ryan and Josh having a good old chin wag, um, but they look totally blurred. Um, anyway, we're on 0.4 megabytes a second, jumped up to 1.5 megabytes. This is with my head facing away from the drone. So I'm gonna turn around and face it, should jump up a little bit, and it has, because um, of course I'm using these patch antennas which are now facing directly at the drone. It's jumped up to about 5.7 was the most I saw there, 6.7, 9.1, so eight point something. Um, so pretty good with them pointing right at it, considering the fact there's loads of solid concrete and brick walls right between it. 10.4 megabytes that just jumped up to. It's averaging out about, looks like about eight and the, at best 10. So between sort of six and eight on average. And then when I'm facing right at it, it can, it can jump up to about 10 megabytes per second. So what we'll do is get Ryan to come over with his other antenna. Subscribe to Real Time FPV because this is the kind of effort that he goes to for my videos. And he puts good content out even though he's only got like 30 subs or something. So sub to Real Time FPV for helping out with this. I was stood basically where I am now. So like with that blue bit there. And then yeah, I start exactly. So I started out facing it. Um, you got DVR going. Yeah. So what's it looking oh, like? I lost, lost image transmission stopped. Really? Yeah. That bad? Yeah. Oh wow, okay, try and maybe turn your head or something. Can you get it back at all? No. Well, so where I'll does it come back? back? A little bit. Okay. Yeah, I've got, got it back. You got it back, okay. Yeah. What's it saying? Like megabytes per second? 0 0.8, 0 0 0.9, 1 1.3. I'll take a couple of steps forward. Yeah, try like some different positions and see like what the best you can get is, best megabytes per second. Right, this is obviously getting worse. Yeah, there's a, a lot of... It's, it's reading 1.6, but I think it's frozen. Right, so you wouldn't yeah, be able... Yeah, I lost it. Right. Okay. But does it... Let, let me know where it comes back, like... Maybe when we walk all the way around here. Yeah, it's back now. Okay. 0.3. Right. So pretty low, but you yeah. can see. Can you see Josh? What's he doing? I can't see. It's just like pixelated. It's okay. Unpliable. Okay. Yeah, mine looked pretty bad as well. Mine wasn't. Didn't look way better than that. But at certain points, it was going up to like I say, max ten. It was averaging out about six to eight megabytes per second with these Maple wireless ones. Um, and then it's going up to ten, which is totally flyable, yeah, yeah, isn't definitely. it? Consider it's only on twenty-five milliwatts, and there's all of that yeah. is that right what should you what's the concern Below 10 you should start start getting ready for some drop out and some, some frozen right cream. we've got the stock antennas on now and honestly i think these kind of look the best but then they were designed by dji for these specific goggles ryan said he kept catching these on things when he was flying in his car which is another advantage to his little stubby antennas i'll stand back over in the exact same spot right here by the blue graffiti, head pointing away, and it's totally pixelated. But, and we're on, yeah, 0 0.5, one megabytes a second, 0 0.9, it's pretty bad, 0 0.9. It's consistent, it's not really moving at all. I'll try moving my head a little bit. So yeah, with a bit of head movement, we went up to 1.5 there, and that's settling about 1 1.2, 0 0.7, 1.3, so now I'll try turning so that they're facing where the drone is. I'm getting a red flashing warning as well. That the, you know, the signal's very, very low. It looks totally pixelated. Um, 2.1, that was about the highest it got to. I'll try facing this way. Oh, it went up to three there, three megabytes a second. But yeah, it definitely looks lower. So there you go. I think to sum it up, these look the best and they're absolutely fine. These will be fine for just normal flying and much improvement compared to analog. You'll get really good range. Um, the Axi ones, pretty similar to these. Maybe a touch less signal, maybe about the same, but very convenient. And the Maple Wireless ones, definitely the best performance. 
Just to let you know, on that same day of testing, I was able to fly the entire abandoned building with really clear, nice signal and even fly in areas that I wasn't normally able to see with analog. So usually it's a lot clearer, it's a lovely image that you get with these. And, you know, as I mentioned, we were really trying to push the system. Um, so that's why it looked so pixelated in those images. But it was interesting anyway. And I mean, how do antennas like this compare to, say, one of the most popular antennas at the moment, which are the Axie Combo antenna, where you have a, two patches and two Omni antennas? And I can understand the logic with that actually, because of course then you've got the advantage of the patch, so you've got good clear signal in front of you, and then the Omni, which will give you good signal all around in all directions. Um, the problem with those, and I haven't got any, so you know I think they're probably they're perhaps really good, but you can't adjust those patches. Um, so they're stuck to, the, to your head, and it's basically wherever your head points is where those patches are gonna point. What's nice about these, because you may think, well, hang on, I don't want to run all patches because then I'm not going to get any signal behind me. You can still get signal behind you as long as you don't go too far. And what's really nice about these specific patches, and maybe the case with other ones as well, but certainly with these, they're really adjustable. And so you can get them like quite high up off the goggle. And they've got these little adapter pieces that are just really easy to adjust. And uh, you can point them sort of in this direction so you get signal going all the way here, this direction, and you can cover most angles really by just how sort of repositionable these are. The other thing with the Axie combo is that it does block this part off. So if you wanted to do the analog mod, and that's one of the other two mods that I was gonna discuss and that I haven't done personally, that'd be the analog mod where you can put an analog receiver in the goggles uh, in the front, and then you can fly in analog as well. The reason I haven't done it is because I've got some fat shark goggles, so if I do want to fly in analog, I'll, I'll just use those fat shark goggles. But honestly, I don't want to fly in analog anymore. It's just so nice with the digital. I'm trying to convert everything over. Um, and if I want to watch my friends on a little screen, I just use the little FPV watch from Boss Cam, which allows me to sort of ride along and watch their flying. So that's why I haven't done the analog mod. Uh, and the final modification would be the battery, because you can get different battery cases and straps and things that will hold the battery on your head, so you don't have to have this wire hanging down. That's sort of both one of the pluses and minuses of this bit of design. Well, I think the reason they did it, you see, the, the positive to it, is that you don't have to wear a battery on the side of your head. These are already quite big and heavy, um, and they're very power hungry because it's such a good bit of kit. It does sort of draw a lot of power. So I guess they assume that us pilots don't want to wear a big battery on the side of our head and that's why it's on the little wire and it goes in your pocket. If you're interested in which battery I'm using, I'm just using these Tattoo 850 milliamp power packs which are from my Cinewoop. I would say just use any 4S battery that you've already got um, or if you haven't got one yet, buy one that you can use on another drone in the future and then you get sort of two for the price of one uh, in terms of use. So those are the batteries that I'm using, and I prefer just to keep it in my pocket. But there is a problem with this wire, and personally I've caught this wire, knelt on it accidentally when I was putting these away, and then uh, dented the front of the goggles. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's a bit of a problem with it, and other people have had problems with this wire as well. I didn't grab that, I'll take, I'll take these peeps. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Oh, oh, oh. oh God, in my oh. pocket. And the DJI internet. goggles are broken. We're good, it's all good. Did it? It was on, hit rubber. Good. That's not rubber. Okay. So it's not perfect. You may want to upgrade the battery situation, um, but it's not something that I've done personally. Do you need to do those upgrades? What I would say is if you're on the fence about going digital and you're not sure whether you want to spend that extra money to do all the upgrades, just get the system. If you can only just afford this, get it and enjoy it as it comes because it's absolutely brilliant just out of the box. The strap, the foam and even the antenna are absolutely fine. They'll fit, you'll be able to see in crystal clear digital and you'll get really good range. Later on, maybe you wanna do the upgrades and all in all, we've got 40 quid for the strap, 20 for the foam and about 60 for the antennas. So about 120 pounds for all those upgrades that I did and you may wanna do them, you may not. What upgrades have you done to your goggles? Let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in doing any of these upgrades yourself, I'll put some links in the description. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.